Alex Kennedy, basketballinsiders.com, here on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN. What's going on, Alex? How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you? We're doing good. A lot of uh, news here. Let's start with the Frank Vogel news. Uh, I guess not a surprise that he was let go from the Pacers. I can't imagine that someone would have done a much better job with that team. Uh, but w- were you surprised, and do- will you be surprised if he has not scooped up this offseason? Well, there have been some rumors lately, so I think uh, when you saw Larry Bird announce the press conference, people weren't surprised. But whenever the reports first uh, surfaced, I was very surprised that they were looking to make a change. You know, as you mentioned, Frank Vogel's done a very good job with the players that he had there. Um, obviously, you know, they made a few trips to the Eastern Conference Finals, and uh, he had them in the postseason and uh, in contention for a few years there. Uh, and then this year and last year, I don't think really it's on Vogel, the, the fact that they struggled a bit. You know, last year, Paul George's injury really uh you know ruined their season and then this year they made so many changes to the roster with guys like david west and roy hibbert leaving uh bringing in some young guys bringing in monte ellis you know they had a number of new faces this year so the fact that they couldn't get out of the first round uh i, I think that wasn't on vogel in fact i think you know this team without vogel probably doesn't uh compete with the toronto raptors the way they did so I, I was surprised that they made the change i don't think that's necessarily the right move especially right now you know we just saw three of the top coaching uh, candidates on the market get hired in Luke Walton, Tom Thibodeau, Scott Brooks. Uh, I, I, you know, because they, hit, they were in the playoffs, they weren't able to go after those guys. Um, so I'm not sure this is the right move. Um, as, as far as Luke's next for Vogel, you know, I've talked to some people that said that, uh, you know, TV networks are definitely going to pursue him and start talking to him. Um, you know, he's very good with the media and uh, is known for being able to break things down in layman terms. So don't be surprised if uh, TV networks are pursuing him. Uh, but certainly he's going to come up with some of these open jobs as well. The question is, will he want them? You know, we look at the Sacramento Kings job, the Houston Rockets job. You know, there's a, a lot of baggage and drama that comes with these situations. Uh, so it remains to be seen if he's going to want to coach one of these uh, these teams that have an opening. Uh, but certainly he's going to be highly coveted by uh, pretty much everyone. couple openings around the league, Alex. Do you see a good fit for him, or do you think it's better to just sit this one out, maybe uh, do some TV work? We've been told, uh, suggested that maybe taking a spot on like the Warriors bench, what a high profile team as an assistant. Uh, do you have a landing spot that you think he's a good fit for? If I'm him, I'm probably doing a TV route. Um, I think that's a good way to kind of get yourself some exposure and, uh, and I think it lets him wait till some of these other jobs open up. Uh, if I had to choose one current job from right now, it probably would be the Houston job. I think when you look at Vogel, his strength is his defense and his ability to bring a team together. So when you look at Houston, the fact that you know there are a number of defenders on that team that uh, are pretty good, but I, I think he'd be really good at getting the most out of James Harden. Um, I think he could help them develop a winning culture. But again, you know, there's a lot of drama there. People are unsure about what's going to happen with Dwight Howard. It seems very likely that he leaves. People are unsure about the future of Daryl Morey there. Uh, there's a lot of questions surrounding the Rockets right now. So um, I think that's probably the most attractive job available right now. But if I'm him, I'm probably doing a TV route for a year, uh, making some good money, uh, spending some time with people close to me and not having to travel uh, as frequently as NBA head coaches do. And then next year when more jobs open up, that's when you can start looking and, uh, and try to get one of those jobs. Alex Kennedy with us. Alex, what did you take about or what were your thoughts about Larry Bird revealing that Vogel called him Thursday morning this morning to try and talk about the decision? I think it says a lot about Vogel. Um, you know, he's very loyal, and he thought he could make it work with this roster. Um, he made a number of changes throughout the year, like, you know, playing Paul George at the power forward at times and, uh, you know, playing some of these young guys. You know, they had some veterans on that team, but in the playoffs they decided to roll with Miles Turner, Solomon Hill. You know, I think he felt like his job wasn't done there because they still had a number of young guys that he was working on developing, uh, and he felt like he was the right person for the job. So I think a lot of people in that situation will be upset and, and want to turn down the job or, you know, not even fight for it anymore and just say, okay, I'm going to go somewhere else and make you pay. But for Vogel to fight for his players and want to stay around the team, I think it says a lot about him as a person, as a coach. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what they can do now because I think – well, the, the pressure is on Larry Bird and Indiana to find a better coach uh, because if they go in a different direction and uh, they hire someone that's worse, that's going to be really bad uh, a bad look for them, and it's going to be a mark on uh, Bird's record. You know, we already let Rick Carlisle walk away, and people point that out from time to time. Uh, if they can't get someone else that's going to come in and take the team to the next level, I think you're going to hear some criticism for Bird. Uh, Alex Kennedy's with us here talking NBA, basketballinsiders.com, at Alex Kennedy NBA on Twitter. Alex, the Sixers, a couple deals today. Uh, Ned Cohen, the NBA Associate VP of Basketball Operations and the former Wizards VP of Scouting, Mark Eversley, uh, they are now in the front office, and they are getting some high marks 
around basketball for these hires. What do you know about these guys, and uh, do you think the Sixers did well in bringing these guys into their organization? Yeah, I like these moves a lot. Um, you know, these aren't the, the splashy moves that people talk about a whole lot. Uh, they're not like GM or head coaching hires. But I think these are the kind of moves you have to make in order to build a winning culture and, uh, you know, have really good people in the front office. You always want uh, talented uh, people around your GM and your coach. And uh, it, it's really important to have these guys in the franchise. So I, I think it makes a lot of sense for them. Eversley is someone that's been talked about as a future GM. Uh, he's kind of on track for that right now. And people have uh, have pointed that out that, uh, eventually he could be running his own team. So someone that's respected like that, it's great to bring him in. And then Cohen, he's been around the NBA for, for quite some time now. And people that have worked with him, I've talked to them, and they say he's a, a great person, has an excellent basketball mind, uh, is really going to help the uh, Sixers. And I think when you have someone like you know Jerry Colangelo, then Brian Colangelo, kind of running things, uh, you, you're able to make these kind of hires because uh, those guys uh, demand respect and people want to work with them. So I, I do think it's a, a really good move, two really good moves for uh, the Sixers. And uh, I think these are the kind of guys you want to have around your authority figures in the franchise. Uh, Alex, uh, let's transition a little bit into the games. Last night uh, did not have a great game in terms of uh, the comp- the competitiveness of Cleveland against Atlanta. Against Atlanta. Uh, 25-3 is really the story in that game last night. Any shot at all, Cleveland, not only does it run through Atlanta, but do you see a team in this Eastern Conference that can give them a run? I really don't. I've been saying it for much of the season that I think the Western Conference is really interesting with Golden State and San Antonio, but I just would be stunned if any team other than Cleveland was in the Eastern or was representing the East in the finals. I think that the Cavs are by far the best team. And, uh, you know, even last year when they had injuries, they were able to roll over uh, every team in the East. But now that they're playing, uh, all their guys, they're at full strength and they're moving the ball really well and knocking down open shots, like you mentioned. They're much scarier. You know, they're playing unselfish basketball. They're very talented. You look at their teams, you know, Atlanta, Toronto, Miami, there's a lot of question marks surrounding each of those teams. Now, maybe if Chris Bosh were healthy, then maybe Miami would have a chance to compete with Cleveland in a seven-game series. But I think without, without Bosh, uh, and obviously he was ruled out of the playoffs, that they're in a lot of trouble if they're, if they're going to advance to face Cleveland in the next round. So I really don't see a significant challenger for the Cavaliers. Uh, it's unfortunate, but I think, uh, you know, their toughest series is obviously going to be the NBA Finals, whoever they play. Uh, and it's looking like it's going to be Golden State uh, or San Antonio or maybe OKC if they can pull off the upset. Alex, you mentioned Chris Bosh, and you're talking about the Miami Heat a little bit. They've never lost up 2 nothing. Can they beat Toronto tonight and make that happen? I, I really think so. Um, you know, Kyle Lowry is really shooting the ball poorly for Toronto, and that's really hurt them. He's kind of the guy that, uh, you know, makes their team go forward, and uh, he, he's huge for them offensively. So when he's shooting the ball this poorly, then they're in trouble. Um, you, you know, it's forced DeMar DeRozan to try to shoot the ball more and carry the offense, and he's not the most efficient player, so you don't really want him doing that. Um, you know, they're at their best when they have these guys both playing well together, uh, and that's their one-two punch. So uh, we've seen them struggle throughout the playoffs so far, and I think that's going to continue, uh, especially because you look at Miami and, you know, Goran Drogic is playing really well lately. Dwayne Wade's filling the stat sheet. Hassan Whiteside is dominating down low. You know, they have uh, some depth with Joe Johnson, Amari Stoudemire, Justice Winslow, you know, this is a very talented team. So I think Miami is going to beat Toronto. Uh, I think entering the series, my prediction was in six games. And uh, I'll stand by that. I think Toronto, you know, may be able to compete uh, and, you know, steal a game or two. But I just think Miami uh, is the much better team right now. And before we turn the page on the heat, does Chris Bosh play an NBA game again ever? Honestly, I don't know. And that's really unfortunate. Uh, I I wish I could tell you yes, but um, it's a scary situation. Um, you know, I've actually had uh, two pulmonary embolisms, so I've been in Chris Bosch's situation to some yeah. extent, and it's a really scary thing. You know, you go through it, and uh, each one is different. I think that's why you're having Chris Bosch right now, you know, push against the heat and, and try to play uh, because he had the first uh, blood clot, and, and basically he was in tons of pain, couldn't do anything. With this one, he's had no pain, so he's wondering, okay, I feel fine. Why can't I go play and uh, get on the court? Uh, that's kind of been the, uh, com- the confusion there. Uh, but I, I think Miami is trying to protect him from himself. They know this is very serious. Uh, when you're on a blood thinning medication, you can't go out there and risk taking an elbow or getting cut uh, because then you, you could die. Uh, it, it's a life or death. So I think that's why you have Miami being really careful here. Yeah, and he will not play, obviously, uh, uh, the rest of this season. They announced that yesterday. Uh, talk with Alex Kennedy, BasketballInsiders.com. San Antonio, Oklahoma City tomorrow night. Uh, I was pretty, you know, the end of that game, say what you will, San Antonio had the ball at the end with a chance to win it at home, and they were very helter-skelter. It's, now they got to go on the road. How imperative is this game tomorrow night for Oklahoma City? 
It's really huge. Uh, I think they can take the momentum here if they're able to uh, to get a win. But I think San Antonio is the better team. Um, obviously, game one, they dominated. As you said, last game, uh, they had a chance. But I think the big difference in this series is Greg, uh, Greg Popovich uh, making adjustments game to game versus Billy Donovan. Uh, Popovich is obviously, you know, arguably the best NBA coach of all time. And he's terrific at making adjustments and, uh, you know, moving his players around and getting the most out of each guy. So uh, I think the Spurs probably have the big advantage there. But uh, when you talk about just one-on-one scoring and the star power, um, you know, obviously San Antonio's best player has been uh, Kawhi Leonard and Marcus Aldridge, but it's real tough to uh, to guard guys like Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. So I think that's what's kind of keeping uh, OKC in the series right now. Um, and I think if they want to have any chance that, uh, you know, pulling away and uh, being able to advance here, uh, this next game is very important for them. Alex, give me um, your take on Mike D'Antoni. He's already interviewed for the Rockets' head coaching job. Now, there have been some people who have – insinuated that if he was getting a job offer somewhere else that the Sixers might bump him up to the head coaching job what is your take on this whole situation happening uh, both with him in Philly and his opportunities and possibilities to get a job someplace else well I think uh, he's respected around the NBA just because he's had success in the past but if you look at his last few stops you know they haven't been very positive he's had a number of issues uh you know, adjusting his game plan and, uh, you know, getting the most out of some of his players. You know, you look at the Lakers, what he did with Dwight Howard and Pau Gasol, uh, you know, the issues he had in New York. I think that right now, you know, his name isn't hot like some of the other coaching candidates out there. Uh, and honestly, I think he's probably, uh, you know, in, in, in his best place is probably as an assistant where he's helping with the offense and helping with things like that, not necessarily having to run everything. Um, but certainly he's a guy that's going to come up and be interviewed. I think as these teams do their due diligence, especially, you know, teams like Houston and Sacramento that are doing really extensive coaching searches, they're going to talk to him and see what he has to bring to the table and what his plan would be. So uh, don't be surprised if you keep hearing his name, uh, but I'm not sure he'll be someone that uh, gets one of these open coaching jobs this summer. Would would he, would Philadelphia, do you think that Philadelphia would bump him up in, in rather than lose him? If they felt that he was going to go somewhere else, would Colangelo step in and say, we'll make you the coach here? Yeah, honestly, it's possible. Um, it wouldn't surprise me, I'll say that much. I think because of the history he has with the Colangelos, um, you know, certainly they, they feel like he's a guy that can help them moving forward. And, um, you know, Brett Brown, I, I think he's a very good coach, too. I think he's uh, been in a bad position there with some of the talent they had. Um, but I think, uh, you know, a few years ago, he was being talked about as one of the best assistants that wasn't a head coach. So, I think it'd be tough to lose Brett Brown and give up on him, but I do think D'Antoni, with his history, could be uh, someone that does get elevated to that head coaching job if they feel like they're going to lose him. Um, you know, certainly they felt like they had to bring him in and that he would help the bench uh, and, you know, help on the sidelines. So uh, they, they respect him. Uh, they know him well. They have a working history with him. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me, but honestly, I don't know one way or the other if they're looking to do that. Uh, Alex Kennedy, basketball insiders at Alex Kennedy NBA, the NBA playoffs this weekend on 97.3 ESPN continues tonight with uh, just one game on the docket. That's Miami and Toronto. Then a pair of games tomorrow, Cleveland and Atlanta. I think Golden State and uh, Portland just took themselves off the schedule. They've had a little bit of a break here, which obviously helps out uh, Golden State here. But, uh, Alex, always a pleasure to catch up, pal. Thanks a lot. Take care.